Hello everyone, welcome back to the shed. It's not a pre-order this time. It's KR Models GT3. Let's get her out of the box. So, yeah, I figured I should finally get one of these before uh, they sort of wrap up production for a good little while. Because they said, oh, it's the third batch now, and, you know, if demand comes back, yeah, we'll make some more. But for now, this is the be-all and end-all. It's the final batch for a while. So I figured I should get one. Breaking my idea of my first KR Models product being the leader, because I've had that on pre-order for ages, and it's due to come out this year. Nah. Gave in. Let's have a GT3. If you don't know what the GT3 is, it's a gas turbine locomotive. Looks very similar to a steam locomotive compared to the other two gas turbines we've had in the UK, which I believe were Bovary Brown and the other one was Metvik, maybe? I can't remember what the other one is, but both of those have been made uh, by Rails in collaboration with Helljan, or Helyan, however you like to pronounce it. Uh, and this one is made by KR Models. This one's English Electric, if to say that. Bag of detail bits, uh, some modern sods to go on the bogies by the looks of it, two. Oh, and the front. They are uh, half discs, they're closed discs, some brake pipes, and a screw link coupling that is hooked onto itself. I don't know if that's actually, you know, a proper three link or if it's just moulded like that. Doesn't really matter, I don't use them. Stick with the good old tension lock. So let's get her out. Um, as you can probably tell, because we don't have gas turbines around now, um, it wasn't too successful. Um, why wasn't it successful? Diesel is cheaper, uh, or at least was cheaper. Don't know what it's like now. So, yeah, that's one of the main reasons it didn't, it didn't really succeed. That and uh, an increase in the amount of maintenance, and basically it would cost more. That's the bottom line. And British Railways were looking for a cheap, effective way to get rid of steam, which was diesel. So. There we are. Uh, I, I did all that, didn't even put the detail pack back where it belongs. Well done. Right. Now you may have noticed when I pulled this out, it had a big old stop symbol on the instructions. It's basically saying there's electrical connections between the thing. Don't break it, you know? So, but I'm used to that. I'm not used to breaking, you're used to the electrical connections, dear God. Uh, so what you also get in here, you've got a service sheet, you've also got a uh, info pamphlet on the loco, and you've got the DCC functions. Guess which one we're interested in. Because this, this is a sound fitted version. Why did I go with the original livery and not another one? Uh, because... Um, as interesting as the other fictitious liveries are, uh, just wasn't interested. I'm interested in the one it was actually in. So let's plant this over here. Have a look at the functions real quick before we get around the track or anything. What have we got? So we've got directional lights, turbine drive, so sound on basically, whistle or horn, which you can change with CV155. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Three is not in use. Buffering up when moving. Coupling hook and stationary. Manual brake application or brake dump. Foot plate door slams. Mark 1 coach door slams. It's useful because we are running Mark 1s today. Toilet pipe discharge. That's hmm, nice, I get. Mm, I wouldn't describe that as nice, but it's okay. That's an interesting feature. Variable speed flange squeal. Okay. Dispatch whistle. 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 <laughs> Dispatch whistle. Uh, Sanders, AUX2, doesn't really say anything, it's probably just a free slot, I suppose. Speed dependent debts, cab light, uh, disable directional lights, okay. And then again, a listing for CV155. And on the back, you've got a exploded diagram of the model. Ta da! 
So we'll have another look at that in a minute. Just want to have a look over the model real quick. Well, let's get it on the track and have a look. Just make sure there's nothing wrong on the bottom. Doesn't look like it. Uh, I'm not going to put it... Uh, you know what, I'll put it on that track for display purposes. I was going to say, I don't know if this other loco is set to an address other than 3. It's on this track, so it'll be conflicting to move it. Right, so camera off the tripod, let's have a closer look. So, first of all, colour, livery, interesting. Hmm, yes. Uh, some would call that ochre, I think it's called in the pamphlet Beech Leaf Brown. Uh, as you can see, not a Lake Crest on the tender, but that is Vulcan Foundry English Electric. I believe up here it also says something to the same effect. English Electric Vulcan Foundry, yep. Uh, full discs shown on the front. Like I said, layout like a Steam Loco. A bogey at the front and con rods supporting six driving wheels. And a tender for carrying all the fuel. Quite an interesting concept, I wonder how popular this truly really was with the test crews. Very nice, I believe the issues in the past was a wonky buffer beam uh, that got rectified because this is now the third batch, I'll put that in the title. This is the most recent batch. Bogey is on the correct, correct way round I believe. Uh, tension lock coupling doesn't poke too far at the front. I don't imagine you'll be running this much in reverse, so I think you could probably remove that. Steps are nice. Let's have a look in the cab. Very sort of 60s with that control desk. Something out of Star Trek, maybe. Uh, gauges down there. And this uh, sort of step, I suppose. Yeah, steps leading up to the top. They're very nicely done. Unframe on the tender is very nice as well, keeps it quite simple and I suppose it hides away any of the necessary stuff there. There is brake rigging under there though, so worth note. And the corridor with some windows looking into the tender as well. And the tension lock and some gaps for adding that extra detail. Look, I'm going to be weird. Sprung buffers. Sprung buffers. Yes. The grill up front with that equipment behind is also very interesting very nice it's a very imposing locomotive to look at um, quite interesting striking yes color quite odd doesn't stand out too much it's not a bright color but it's certainly a, a weird one not quite brown not quite orange definitely not ochre um, I've got two ochre Locos, I've got the 31 and well, it's technically a class 30 and the Western 52. Um, so this will make a nice, nice little go, and I'm sure this will end up in a lineup with all my other experimental prototype locos and gas turbines, especially when the uh, next gas turbine releases from rail slash Helgen. I imagine that's going to be very fun, right? Let's get back on the tripod and have a muck about with some noises. So back on the tripod and to control this we're using the trusty NCE power cab. Currently at address three, let's unisolate row three. There we are. Let's plonk that there. Fold out the instructions, press them down. So let's do function one. That's reasonably loud and typical for the type of turbine loco I'd expect that sound fitted. I have just noticed this. Uh, this grill is uh, this etched grill is sticking up a little on the tender. It's 
not quite flush with the body. Um, nothing a little glue can't fix, I suppose, but... I mean, this was fresh from the box. I bought this from Rails. Um, it was still in the KR Models brown box. And it still had the plastic wrap on it, so this is, this is straight from the factory. So that's a bit... Eh, it's not too noticeable. But um, maybe that could be improved. Um, so let's have a look at headlights. So directional lighting. Uh, that's tail lamps at the front. Nothing at the rear. Oh, there we go. Now we've done that. Uh, so, yeah, we've got headlights at the front and we've got tail lights at the rear. Very nice. Next is whistle or horn, so function two. Air whistle at the moment, so I could change that to a horn or an alternate air whistle. Uh, so buffering up, so this is actually, because we're stationary, it's going to be coupling hook. That it is. Uh, five is going to be a brake dump. That it is. Uh, foot plate door slams. Yep, uh, mark one door, coach door slams. That's not randomized. Uh, let's go expand. Yeah, so that's not randomized. That's me pressing seven each time you heard the door slam there. Toilet pipe discharge. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, let's see, variable flames. We still can't really do that because we are still at the moment. So option 10, which is dispatch whistle. Yep. Uh, then we've got sanders on 13. Yep. Uh, then we've got speed dependent detonators. Did I look over that one? I think I might have. Speed dependent debts. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, cab light, option 19. Yep, yeah, that definitely is a cab light. You can very clearly see that in the video. That's a nice bright cab light. Brilliant. Um, disable directional lights. And then you've got listing for the CD again. So. Now that we've been over that, that's most of, if not all the sounds. So what we'll do is zoom the camera out and put it through its first little test that I want to put it through. Which is going over a double slit and a curved point. So let's give it some speed. smooth that is one of the Wow, okay. Honestly, this loco is one of the best for navigating a double slip. That is impressive. So I've turned the sound off, and as you can hear, nice and quiet, straight from the factory. Can't complain about that. Very smooth. This is currently running at step 40 on the NCE power cab. Let's see how it is over the express points. like they weren't even there. Got to say, the consistency of the close coupling between the tender and the loco is really good. There's been no clashes at all, especially over those, uh, especially over the double slip. And let's see the other set of express points. Let's 
Yeah, fantastic. So this next test is over the three-way point we have leading into our station on the layout. I'm only going to test it over two ways of this three-way point as unfortunately we've got something that is not DCC fitted sitting in one of the platforms so I can't really do that. Uh, okay, interesting. So I'm guessing because I activated number 5, just in case the brake function does actually work as a brake, um, I'm guessing it tried to start up its normal sound file there. And then did part of the turbine shutdown. Anyway, that's how it looks. Let's see how it looks in reverse. Yep, looks fine. And then over the other way. Yeah, looks fine. Rides that like a dream. That's honestly one of the best locos we've had. Uh, for going over the triple waypoint and the double slip. Um, usually there's always been maybe, um, usually always maybe, yeah. Uh, there's been a bit of a stutter or maybe a slight, whoop, as in a, maybe a little jump, but that was perfect. No problems there. No complaints at all with that. Brilliant. Ignore that horn, that was a real train. Um, right, so let's get the GT3 onto some Mark 1 coaches, like I said, and see her running around the layout.
So that is KR Models GT3. Really nice model. There is only one complaint I can have about this model, and that is the slightly, uh, I don't know if it's bent or it's not sitting flush, etched grill on the tender. I'm sure that can be fixed easily with a little bit of glue. Um, the directional lighting is very nice. The cab seems very nicely detailed. Uh, all of the uh, grills up front are very nice as well. Um, the issues they've had in previous batches are rectified. I've spoken with uh, KR Models on the stand a few times when I've been at model shows, and they have pointed out, yeah, we've you know fixed these issues by doing another batch or during the second batch. Um, by modifying the tooling ever so slightly, I believe. Uh, one of the issues was the buffer the first time, and I think uh, to do with the buffer being at the front, it was sagging slightly. And uh, they, the factory put the, um, the front bogey on backwards, which was laughable. Um, but that wasn't their own fault, that was uh, an issue at the factory. Uh, honestly, one of the smoothest running things we've had out of the box, and nice and quiet on the layout. Uh, handles all point work including the double slip and triple point perfectly no issues at all in handling those uh, I think this loco could benefit from a traction tire or two at low speed with just this six coach train navigating um, some curves it did slip slightly at a slower speed uh, you did see it going around the layout very quickly which was set at speed 90 as it would be in real life I suppose if each one is a scale mile per hour I don't know if it is uh, but I thought that was a safe bet looks really at home with the maroon coaches um, small little pork pie uh, being told about the coaches one of them is actually a Thompson full baggage full break um, the rest are Mark 1's though uh, if you have an early 60s layout, I recommend you probably pick one of these up if you're doing like the Midland or the Woodhead um, because it's accurate to the period and it's one of those little odd balls you can go, oh that actually fits here, yeah that's great. Um, if you're into your prototypes, I recommend you pick one up. Uh, let's talk about price. Price for a non-sound fitted one is £200 I believe, a sound fitted one is £300. I picked this up from Rails of Sheffield. I ordered it yesterday. Thanks to uh, discounted DPD postage, uh, it arrived today. Uh, the postage was £4, so £304 for a sound fitted model. Uh, considering this is a niche and not everyone is going to want these prototype locos uh, that only ran for a specific amount of time. Um, I can understand a high price tag like that. I have already paid a similar price to pre-order the Big Bertha Loco, the Midland Banker, and the Leader. So all in all, yes, very nice. Livery is applied very nicely. It runs very smoothly straight out the box and can handle a train very well on this layout and navigate all point work very, very well. So, let's think. Next time we're going to be in the shed, probably going to be Revolution Trains Caroline Inspection Saloon. That is due at the end of this month, so I believe that will be the next model related thing on this channel. So, until next time we are in the shed, goodbye.